for Aberdeen. There they are, the supporters who gave them emotional backing on Wednesday night. And I'm sure there's a lot more to come for them. And there is the Aberdeen side. I suppose it is a big problem getting to the peak of a European game and then coming to perhaps by comparison the more mundane situation of a Premier Division game except it is extremely important for both teams today and that Aberdeen side you can see there are one or two changes Neil Cooper is in at number two in place of Stuart Kennedy McMaster at number four and at number ten the young man who made the delight possible in Wednesday a brilliant substitution by Alec Ferguson on he came and John Hewitt ripped his name large in the history book by getting the winner and you know at the end of the game on Wednesday night at Tannadice I felt sick at heart for this team here who fought so hard to the very end to try and get into the, their semi-final you know they didn't play as well as they ought to have in that game but they tried desperately hard and it was a night of disappointment but nobody fought harder than the captain Paul Hegarty he had one or two incredible misses that uh, I suppose nine times out of ten he would have put away himself but his sheer drive and inspiration almost got United there and there's the referee today Eddie Pringle from Edinburgh refereeing his last ever game at Fittodre he retires at the end of the season off we go to loud roars again on a beautiful day for football earlier this morning it was almost like a, a spring day it's got slightly chillier but the pitch is in perfect condition I was on it this morning with Alec Ferguson on the bench today is Simpson and Black Bill McLeese just getting his leg to that there's Hewitt John McMaster Cooper almost getting that nice deep touch forward. Derek Stark. Well, that's a free kick. Late right tackle there by Cooper. Well, that's a good header. Just past there. Ralph Bell. Excellent ball. And I think it was a timing. Not just a leap in the air subtle glance of the head and just to the side United will be trying everything they know in this game a defeat today and virtually it's the end of their season here he is there to dodge good tackling by McLeish Strachan lays it to the side Hewitt Malthus giving his eye on the ball watch that it's a good ball inside, Rigby is there! The big defender once again. How important this player can be, he's going way back to his position, but it's the way he crept forward there, supplementing the attack, driving it in. I think Kamish McAlpin slightly surprised by it. McMaster. Drifting towards Goff, who just gets there. Good. Here's Weir. Here's Dougie Bell and promptly back. Good supporting by David Dodge who come all the way down and is not too happy. There's somebody or other. McGee, can he get his shot? And he does! And Hewitt, still not cleared. Wild, what a many, and they can't put it away. Quite astonishing. it was like Russia traffic along Union Street there although I don't think there are as many collisions in Union Street as were happening and the ball simply couldn't come cleanly to anybody falling like nine pins and it was pushed away No. The very 
pace that he had picked up acted against him there. Well, very good play, but uh, the ball itself directed to near rugby. Malthus. Well, Aberdeen are getting the dander up now. 20 minutes gone, there's a great ball in Hegarty, look at how he did that. Corner kick. Good play by Hegarty, coming at him very awkwardly. Let to Stutlow try and stun the ball for the abdomen. Corner kick. There's a great save. Oh yes, Hegarty's for Calpin. Showing he can be just as agile as Leighton. Plucking that away cleanly from Bell. 20 minutes of the first half remaining. David Neri being hampered there by McGee. In fact, hampered so much that uh, there's Dave Neri's boot in his hand. Miller. Foraging forward. That's a nice ball. Milne, great goal. It's a goal. The ball has gone in. It went over the line. 1 0 for Dundee United. A really crisp, positive move there. I think uh, certainly the man at the root of it, Richard Gold, the South African, driving forward there. A great shot there by Milne. And I thought it was a goal. It went from the underside of the bar. I think there was backspin in it. Linesman indicated to Eddie Pringle, the referee, the ball had gone over. Well, there's a late tackle by Dodge as Rugby pushed that away. Well, the man with his elbows on the dugout there, what a week for him first by Yen, and then this morning leading the reserves to a resounding 2-0 triumph over Aberdeen University Alec Ferguson says that Archie Knox, his assistant manager there is very chuffed about that Goal, forward again that is the free kick Good ball forward. There's Philip. David Dodds. Stark. It's going a begging. That's the second one. No. Two nothing. What a day he's having. Suddenly he found himself with a ball loose and after half an hour he rattled that in. 2 nothing, and Aberdeen are really up against it. And an astonishing performance by Dundee United who must have felt very badly deflated and depressed after that result on Wednesday night. It says a lot for the character that they've come back and played the crisp football in the counter-attack that they've been having. That is a free kick. Well, Aberdeen have a game in their hands now, to use that well-worn expression. Straight off McGee. McGee. Malthus playing very well. Willie Miller. Bannon. That's Miller. Onside. Mark McGee. Bell. That's weird. It's not such a good ball. And it just got the post. John Dewitt. Well, if Aberdeen can do anything at all today, surely must come from this man, who's very good at putting it 
across. It wasn't such an effective one that time. It looked as if it had been missed, but even that kind of miss hit took it near the post. Even Bannon dropped down. And in fact, the halftime whistle has gone with Dundee and ID leading by two goals to nothing. When I say it's a surprising scoreline, it's not because Dundee and ID are not deserving of that lead for the way they crisply finished off. But that uh, Aberdeen, I think, expected perhaps Dundee United to be slightly deflated today. But they've played with great determination and purpose. And it's been a marvellous afternoon so far for Ralph Bill. It's been clean, clinical. And the first one, I think uh, Aberdeen players thought it hadn't gone in. But uh, from our view here, it did cross the line. And then the second one, in off the post. Stunning a huge capacity crowd at Fitodri. Well now, I think we're going to be in for a marvelous second half. Aberdeen, I think, must press or try to press home every advantage. It's got to be attack, attack all the time if they want to get back against what has been a very accomplished and united side. Well, there's Jim McLean right in the middle of the picture. Keeping his delight to himself. United have shaped their game today on the strong foundation of defence. Some superb breakaways, clean finishing. That's a very good combination. Almost down the line, Hewitt to Strachan. I think that had just gone over, yes. Although an excellent tackle by David Neary. McGee just gets away with it. This time was a dreadful finishing though. Superb run by McGee. I think it just flashed where he said he could he could see the net, but he was off balance, so a player's inside him. And it looked very awkward at the end. And Aberdeen are going to make a substitution. The young man was quite superb in the air, apart from anything else that he has. Eric Black. And Peter Weir is off. Touched on there by Strachan. Oh, some careless passing today from Aberdeen. There's the race on. David Nenny looks at it very carefully. Strachan. Bell goes in. Tries to get it over. Still in play. And I think the corner kick. No, the ball had gone over, yes. Hewitt taking it. The place tries to go up. Looks as if they might have been pushing, but... Billy Clipwood breaking, and he's all on his own. He really will have to wait until he gets support. Milne racing up away in the left. See how he held that. Milne's on the other side of the park. That is Stark. And that was to the near post. Swift break there by United. Black to McGee. Alphas let him do all the work to bring it under control, just pushed it away. Strachan to take it. Sniggy, Strachan, Alphas once again, intelligently keeping his eye on the ball, not deceived by the action of the body at all. He's a good, accurate player. Rugby. That's Bell. Did that well to the line, and that was brilliantly flicked through his legs by Black. And talking about eye in the ball, that was Hamish McAlpin doing exactly that. One of the fundamentals of the game. Good ball by Strachan. That's McGee. Alphus again. Strachan takes on Malthus this time, and still not a corner even. Rugby, slack, 
Stewart with that, and that is the corner kick. Wow, that was a mistake. A careless moment in United's defence. Just the possibility of a break for Hewitt, but only the corner. Floats in well, and it's off the line by Hegarty. He's done that before, in a bit of elbowing, the whistle has gone. Pressure is relieved, free kick to United. McLeish looking right into the sub. Yeah, you can see that uh, we're going to be brought down by Black. Youngster going in well. Three goes. No, he threw himself. No penalty. It's a throw to Aberdeen. Good run, penetrative run by young Eric Black. And Aberdeen is making, uh, I think, a very expected substitution. Dougie Bell has not had the best of games, and on comes Neil Simpson. On to Neri. And Rugby's there. Neatly down. Hewitt. McLeish. A good tackling there by Dave Neri. And Savannah Balls is tracking. I don't think Gordon Strachan's got that penetrating pace back. Barging into Miller, free kick. Strachan will take it. And I think a penalty has been given, has it? Penalty kick, yes, for that charge in Miller. Everybody looked towards the referee. There was nothing dramatic about his uh, gesture, but eventually he did point down to the spot. So Aberdeen have a penalty kick through the captain coming forward into attack and being barged down. Penalty kick, and how vital this is with exactly 20 minutes gone. So it's Gordon Strachan against Davis McAlpin, and down there in the left hand corner. You'll probably see that David Dodds is being booked, obviously, for protesting. And I think uh, Dodds was involved in that incident. So, Gordon's striking to take this. Now, I don't think Gordon's really back to full match fitness yet. I think we're still to see the best of him this season. He had that long lie-off. But every game he gets stronger and now faced with a vital penalty. He's done it. 2-1. What he has not lost is that deadly touch from the penalty spot. He took that very sweetly indeed. Against the very experienced goalkeeper too. and Willie Miller, oh, gives it away though, Kirkwood, now Goff, Ian Fuller, David Dodds, oh, superb play by McMaster, taking everybody on, and Simpson trying to drive forward, and I think, that is a throw, in fact. Neil Simpson. What about Aberdeen having a player like Simpson on the bench? Bring him on at this stage of the game. That's how strong their resources and reserves are. We're midway through the second half. Only one goal in it now.
It'll be into the sun. It's difficult for defenders. Milne, I think they may be offside. David Dodd's offside. Well, Milne mixing with Manic uh, McLeish, I think. The real problem there was where the offence was committed or where the free kick was to be taken from. Bill was pushing it back, and the ball's in play now. Simpson driving, and there's a bit of bounce in there. And uh, Hamish McAlpin realised that, took a pace backwards onto his line. Dodds. Well, David Dodds getting some heavy treatment there, in fact. All the referee gives is a throw-in. Ralph Mill in a good position again. He's on and he's on the wood. Oh, there's a wild kick by Milne. I don't think he made contact. Well, I'm sure Ralph Milne didn't make contact and he retaliated. He was fouled, there's no question about that. But that was a stupid retaliation. Any retaliation is stupid to me absolutely honest and he'll be booked for that that could have been dangerous referee which card is he going for he's off he certainly swung very dangerously and off he goes he might have been sorely provoked it doesn't matter It's a race, Malpas, McGee, there's Malpas, there's McGee, and it just passed. Simpson was raging up on his lap. He didn't stop to think, he just trotted it. Ooh, that's very slight, David Dodds! Oh, he could have won the game there. Two central defenders in utter confusion. And suddenly Dodds find himself with that opening. But uh, a rather intemperate finish. Dodds, good running, taking the pressure off. And I think he used a hand. <laughs> Can't believe it. Seven minutes left. That was great defensive play by Neri. Central to it. Swiveled there with great certainty. Rugby. Strachan. Black. Corner given. Much to the amazement of the United defenders, I may say. Corner kick. United have six more minutes to hang out. Down to ten men. The curling ball. It's a good one in rugby. Just passed. Big man was really close to that one. Driving forward. That must be awesome for a goalkeeper to face up. To rugby coming in at that pace. But United refused to flinch and in fact produced one of the most organised performances of the season. Now they're blessed with two great defenders in Hegarty and Neri in the last uh, ten minutes or so reminded me of how they drew the ranks together in Bremen. But the point was driven home in no uncertain manner that United not only saved themselves from a disastrous ending to the season but reminded one and all that the championship title is by no means within the grasp of only two teams. Now, it practically goes without saying that Aberdeen are a very fine side, but they can't expect to win every game. And in the very defeat, they've been reminded that life over the next month or so is going to hold out great promise for them, but that nothing, absolutely nothing, can be taken for granted. So yesterday afternoon might very well be as effective in demonstrating that to them than even the formidable verbal power of their manager, Alec Ferguson, who I know is going to work especially hard in the next month to keep his players' targets sharp and clear. 
As for United, what impressed more than anything else was the way they seemed to have banished their disappointments of Wednesday from their minds. Afterwards, I asked Jim McLean, whose larynx betrayed a certain degree of vocal encouragement to his team yesterday, what Tannadice had been like after Wednesday's game. Well, I think uh, on a Thursday morning the place was uh, like a morgue and obviously we were uh, quietly confident. I think that Dundee United are not nearly confident enough anyway. And in, what, in what sense? I don't think there's an arrogance, enough arrogance, enough confidence about the players and that without doubt is uh, my problem because uh, I don't build them up enough and uh, moan at times far too much at them. You mean you tend maybe to be too critical at times? Yes. Uh, Everybody says I'm a perfectionist, I don't think I'm just as bad as that, but obviously my thoughts are on the game that uh, every weakness I see, if I point out to a player, and if we get three or four of them sorted out, then uh, mm. they're the better players. It seemed to me on Wednesday, we're just harking back, because I, I think it is important that uh, at times you lacked a, a great inspiring figure up front, because I, I didn't think Paul obviously was uh, at, his, at his best, if you like, and that you had to have Paul Hegarty come forward to do that for you. Well, the last quarter of an hour, we pushed Paul Hegarty forward and we still didn't get a goal, but I disagree with you. I think that where we lacked uh, the player that was necessary, I think we lacked him again today, was right in the midfield. I think that uh, we don't show near enough boys on the ball in the midfield. And in the beginning, Dundee United uh, first gained a reputation for being a, a good football side, and probably at that time with too many people uh, taking time in the ball in the midfield. And well, now we've went to the other extreme, so we've just got to get it sorted out. Well, the marked difference between Wednesday and, and today was the very fact that you had quality finishing. I mean, the, the first goal set up by Goff, for example. I thought Richard Goff had the, had the best game possible of the season. He started the season extremely well, but recently he's went a wee bit off the boil. And, and Ralph today, Milne, the way he took his, his first goal in particular. Yeah, well, again, he filled in for Paul Sturr because he did at Motherwell and the four goals at Motherwell, uh, and the, the team scoring four goals at Motherwell without ball two again today, that's good for the, the players. I mean, he can sting a defence unexpectedly, can't he? He hits the ball quite early. Well, Ralph Milne's an absolutely magnificent finisher. 21 years of age, I think that's about 17 goals he scored this season. But without doubt, I still believe Ralph Milne can contribute a lot more. But I feel that uh, we're tying him a wee bit too much on the right wing. Jim, I've, I've been watching uh, incidents on the field uh, all season, you know, the odd flare-up, the incident, but I, I always find that the real sinner is somebody who retaliates. I, I mean, even though he was sinned against, retaliation, it seems to me, that leaves the referee very little option but to act on it. No, I think that the referee did the only course, or took the only course uh, open for him today. Ralph Milne was completely stupid in what he did do. He had been fouled twice in the same incident. But uh, without doubt, retaliation won't be tolerated by me or the club. But uh, again, uh, as I said, there's no criticism of the referee. There was nothing else left for him but to send the player off. The one thing I will say is that I don't have many friends in the game, and uh, most certainly the Aberdeen crowd really disappointed me today, the way that right from the start of the game they intimidated the referee and the linesman's decisions. But, I mean, but isn't that part of the game? I mean, if you go to... Ibrox or Parkhead. Maybe or, I'm just jealous of a thing. I well, I mean, if you go to Ibrox or Parkhead, yes. uh, or, or even your supporters at Tannadice, they're not exactly loving the opposition. Yes, again, I would disagree with you because I don't think that our supporters... I, I would be far happier if our supporters jumped on the bandwagon and did try to influence the referee's decision. But surely we must think of the poor man in the middle. His job's been made impossible uh, by some of the actions of players at times. But I would, most certainly, it's made a hundred times harder by the people on the terraces. There's no divine right for any club or any supporter to win every game they play. No, even, but it's even the standards that I expect. Yeah. I don't expect Dundee United to win every game. So the people on the terrace have got to realise we've got to take the bad as well as the good. And most certainly there are supporters here today who are not the least bit interested in coming along to watch a game of football. But, but don't you think it's perfectly natural after the peak that Aberdeen were on getting through to the, the semi-final of the European Cup. The supporters came and, quite frankly, did expect them to win and were disappointed. But I don't see that that is any different from um, the two clubs I mentioned, the big clubs, Ibrox or Parkhead, where their I'm supporters not, I'm don't I'm not like. saying that it's any different at all. I'm not making that point. I'm making it the point mainly because I think that referees' jobs are honestly almost impossible to know. In the middle with the tackle from behind that's done in Scotland, it's a disgrace. But without doubt, it's made a hundred times harder by the pe some of the people on the terraces. Now, I may be saying that from a point of being a bit jealous, but we've exceptional crowds at Tannadice, 
And we're thinking well, I'm not maligning your supporters, but I'm saying I don't see that your supporters are any different from I'm not supporters around the country. I'm, I'm not saying they are. All I'm doing is stating a fact here today that, in my opinion, the Aberdeen supporters definitely went overboard in trying to influence the referee's decisions. We were very lucky the day that it was a very experienced referee that was here. Controversial opinions there from Jim McLean, but nice to see a manager taking the referee.